It's a reminder to share the road after a road rage incident between a driver and a bicyclist. See the video captured by a Madison Metro bus camera. And a man opens up to News 3 after a suspected drunk driver drives right into his newly renovated home. Plus, a man is charged after falsely claiming to be a boy last seen in a Wisconsin Dells resort almost eight years ago. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 6. Thanks for joining us. A disturbing road rage incident is prompting the city to remind bicyclists and drivers to get along. Our Killy Arthur has surveillance video of what happened, Killy. Well, rain, shine or snow, people bike in Madison no matter what. And with the warmer weather ahead, we can expect even more cyclists out on the road. It's important to be extra cautious. In what's named one of the most bike friendly cities in the country, you'll often see as many two wheelers as four. People in Madison ride year round were noted for that. Sometimes interactions between cars and cyclists, though, turn less than cordial. The issue of aggressive drivers is, is something that I'm well aware of. But in a March 13th incident, things turned downright dangerous for longtime cyclist Ben Jones as he was heading to work. Surveillance video captured by a Madison Metro bus shows a 19 year old driving into the turn lane narrowly missing Jones. I stood my ground. I told him that um, that it's a bicycle lane and you need to be careful. The driver then hops out of the car while it's still in drive. He runs back in to park it and then you can see him turn to Jones. According to police records, he shoves him just out of frame. Oh. Renee Calloway is Madison's pedestrian bicycle administrator. She saw the incident today for the first time. Everyone has a lot of adrenaline in that moment and they're very excited, but it is important to take a step back, try to de-escalate because you don't want this to turn into a shoving match, a fight. Calloway says drivers need to be aware of cyclists, especially in turning lanes. And not let yourself be distracted by other things, whether it's a conversation your phone. Jones injured his shoulder but isn't deterred. We have such a great city with great bike amenities. He just hopes this scene reminds everyone to share the road no matter how they're commuting. We don't have the protection of airbags and a steel safety cage from a car to protect us. We're really just out there in the elements. Now the driver was issued a citation for misdemeanor battery and this is just a good reminder to take a deep breath if you're ever in a similar situation. That is very good advice. Thank you, Keely. The man accused of killing his wife in Wisconsin Dells is currently facing 11 domestic abuse charges from January. 23 year old Tatiana Hushva was found dead in a home on Washington Avenue after a call to check on her welfare last night. Police then arrested her husband, 31 year old Fuad Pasheyev. He is a suspect in the case. According to court records, Pasheyev is already facing 11 charges of suspicion of domestic abuse towards her. The charges include strangulation, false imprisonment, criminal damage to property, three counts of battery, and five counts of disorderly conduct. A third man has been sentenced in the shooting death of a five year old from Beloit. Isaac Torres was given the maximum sentence today 25 years total in the prison system with 15 years served 10 years extended supervision Torres one of four people charged with the 2016 shooting death of Austin Ramos Jr. The boy was a passenger in his father's car when someone in another vehicle started firing shots. Police believe the boy's father, Austin Ramos Sr., was the intended target. Police are searching for two suspects who may have been involved when, with a crash that left a man's home caved in in Reedsburg. Jamie Perez spoke to the homeowner who describes what happened. Large sheets of glass and parts of this home's foundation are scattered across Shane Murdoch's front yard. A loud crash around 2 a.m. had him thinking... Perhaps a bomb had went off. Not a bomb, but instead he found this. 20 minutes to 3, Wednesday night, Thursday morning, I had a visitor. You can probably see their tracks right here. An automobile came into my yard. You can see where he went over my eaves trough hit this big post for my shrubbery, took out this post and took out my alcove and my brand new windows for $18,000 that only lasted three months. A newly remodeled part of his home destroyed, but Shane is still counting his blessings. Had the car gone 15 feet further, Shane might not be here. I guess I was pretty lucky, huh?
Luck was also on his side when his neighbors saw the cars speeding off. Lucky that I saw those vehicles and I could somewhat give a description even though it was dark. These are her photos she took from that night. She was also the one who immediately called police before she even knew what happened. And I heard what sounded like a car crash. She says to be on the lookout for a newer sports car and a gray Pontiac. And while Shane works out the details with his insurance company, he's just hoping the suspects are brought to justice. Hopefully the, the officers find him before I do. Now, police still are seeking the community's help in getting any information they can to catch the people that did this. If you know anything, saw anything, or have any information that could lead them in the right direction, you're asked to call their non-emergency line. In Reedsburg, I'm Jamie Perez for News 3 Now. Shane was in the process of having his entire home renovated before this happened. He's hoping insurance will cover the damages and then he can go back to his remodeling project. Let's check your first alert weekend forecast with meteorologist Dave Caulfield. Temps in the 60s this weekend, but maybe some rain, right Dave? Yeah, especially as we get into Sunday, Eric, I think the shower and thunderstorm chances start to increase across southern Wisconsin, but we saw the sunshine this afternoon across the area, so that made it feel very nice outside with temperatures near 60 for highs today. and. We'll be in the 60s for the next three days, I think, across the area. So visible cloud track, we see the afternoon clearing, and then over the last few hours, the clouds trying to come back for some of us. Temperatures are in the upper 50s right now, still in Madison, 60 in Lone Rock, 61 in Boscobel and Mineral Point, and 54 in Waukesha. Cooler near the lake today with a pretty decent lake breeze showing up. But otherwise, wind speeds not a major factor in this forecast. So your day planner in Madison temperatures will fall into the mid 40s to start off tomorrow with variably cloudy skies. Highs should make it into the middle 60s. We'll go over rain chances and what to expect for the middle of next week in your first alert forecast in just a few minutes. Dave, thank you. A man who claimed to be a missing Illinois boy with ties to Wisconsin has been charged with making false statements to authorities. An affidavit filed in federal court today says 23-year-old Brian Reaney repeatedly told investigators he was Timothy Pitson, who disappeared eight years ago in 2011 at the age of six. He was last seen with his mother in Wisconsin Dells. His mother then died by suicide and left a note saying she left her son in the care of someone else. The affidavit says Reaney refused to be fingerprinted but submitted to a DNA test after which his true identity was determined. Rini had actually, uh, on two prior occasions, uh, claimed to be a victim of juvenile sex trafficking, and that on those occasions he had been discovered, his true identity had been discovered when he had been fingerprinted. Investigators say Rini could face up to eight years in federal prison if convicted. It's still unclear what caused a home in Janesville to catch on fire last night. The home is located on Hankey Road and the fire broke out around nine o'clock last night. The family was able to get out, but a dog died in the fire. The home is considered a total loss with initial damage estimates coming in around $170,000. A restaurant on Madison's east side was damaged overnight by a fire. It happened at the Sumo Steakhouse and Sushi Bar on Parkside Drive. This is where the Old Country Buffet used to be located. Firefighters say an automatic fire sprinkler helped keep things under control. Someone called 911 around 2.30 this morning after noticing smoke in the area. Firefighters say the kitchen suffered significant damage. One of the men featured in the Netflix series Making a Murderer has been moved to a less secure prison. State Department of Corrections records show Brendan Dassey was moved this week from the maximum security Columbia Correctional Institution in Portage to Oshkosh Correctional Institution, a medium security prison. Dassey is serving a life sentence for helping his uncle Stephen Avery sexually assault and kill Teresa Hallbach back in 2005. His attorney says he earned the transfer because of good behavior and will have more freedom and job opportunities. State lawmakers are asking for your input on Governor Evers' two-year spending plan. Hundreds of people packed the Pontiac Convention Center in Janesville today waiting to speak before the state's budget committee for the first public hearing on the budget. Groups advocated for a number of issues, including Medicaid expansion and increasing funding for special education. Governor Evers introduced his budget proposal in February. It faces large opposition from Republican legislative leaders. A painting showing three children blowing bubbles and playing together that former Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker had removed from the governor's residence is now back up. 
Democratic Governor Tony Evers announced the return of the painting, which had been hanging in the Milwaukee Central Library since Governor Walker took it down back in 2011. The painting by David Lenz, called Wishes in the Wind, is described as a realistic portrait of three children playing with bubble wands on a Milwaukee street. Executive residents each year hosts uh, thousands of uh, children that go through on school group tours. And they thought that it would be wonderful if the children on those tours could see a picture of children that look like themselves. And with that, the children might know that the governor thinks about them and cares about them. Now, former Governor Jim Doyle first displayed it in the governor's residence back in 2010. The UW Arboretum is celebrating something besides spring. It is officially a National Historic Site. The ARBS listing in the National Historic Site Register recognizes it as the birthplace of an ecological restoration, a concept the Arboretum Committee unknowingly pioneered under the leadership of Aldo Leopold in the 1930s. Madison police are reminding drivers about the move over law in Wisconsin. Join us as we ride along with Madison police carrying out this mission. That's next at six. Welcome back. You may have noticed more police cars on the Beltline today. It's part of an operation reminding drivers the cost of not moving over and slowing down for emergency vehicles. Our Madeline O'Neill is here to explain. Maddie? Well, so far this year, at least seven officers have been killed in the U.S. after being hit by a vehicle on the side of the road. That's already more than all of last year, and Madison police say they've noticed more drivers not giving them space during traffic stops on the Beltline. So extra officers are patrolling the highway, making sure cars are following state law, which requires drivers to move over for emergency vehicles or slow down if they can't switch lanes. With road, recent roadside deaths, including a state patrol officer in Illinois about a week ago. Madison officers say the message hits close to home. It's hard to think about and, and scary to think that accidentally that could have been one of our own co-workers or ourselves. Violating the move over law can cost you with a $187 ticket and three demerit points on your license. Of course, if you damage property or hurt or kill someone, those penalties are much steeper. Madison police say they hope to continue this initiative with other events like this throughout the summer. 
Yeah, very important for all the you know squad yeah. cars, emergency mm -hmm. vehicles, construction, all that. Busy yeah. season ahead. And Matt, Maddie, thank you. You're welcome. Well, meet the newest members of the Henry Vilas Zoo. They are small enough to fit into a cup. And showers are possible this weekend. It's going to be warmer though, so that'll be nice. Dave, we'll talk about what we can expect next in the first alert weekend forecast. The Henry Vilas Zoo family is growing. Two African penguin chicks hatched three days apart meet Robin and Dasson. They are the seventh and eighth chicks of their parents, and once they learn to swim, they'll make their debut to the public. Just a reminder, the zoo is hosting its Kids Day tomorrow all day long. The weather should be pretty warm this weekend. Dave's going to tell us a little bit about some penguin weather, though, coming <laughs> midweek, right, Dave? Yeah, we do have some chillier temperatures on the way, making those uh, baby chicks uh, maybe a little bit happier. But the rest of us, I don't think uh, a lot of us want to see the resurgence of winter. And there's still a lot that can happen as we get into next week, so nothing definite just yet. But I do think this weekend will definitely be spring-like with temperatures in the 60s and the chance of some showers and thunderstorms, especially by Sunday. Visible cloud track today. We saw the clouds this morning and then some breaks this afternoon, allowing it to be a really nice afternoon across southern Wisconsin. Some of those clouds trying to make a return this evening, but still feeling quite nice outside. Doppler track is not showing any rain or snow showers in our area to the north and west. A few late returns, but nothing significant. I do think the shower chances for the most part will stay north of Madison as we head into tomorrow. That changes on Sunday. Temperatures are in the upper 50s still in Madison in the mid 50s in Dubuque, Iowa, a pretty hefty lake breeze today, making it 48 in Milwaukee, so significantly cooler closer to the lakeshore in Platteville on the Queen Bee Radio Skycam temperatures are right around 57 right now in Madison. We're looking at mostly cloudy skies after seeing some breaks in those clouds earlier this afternoon. South wind at three miles per hour, so not really a big part of the forecast is that wind temperatures will 
reach the 60s, I think, for tomorrow, Sunday, and Monday. So an extended stretch of spring-like weather. Then, though, as we head into next week, we already alluded to this, where things are looking chillier with highs closer to 40 degrees and possibly some snow showers. More on that in just a little bit. For tonight, though, nothing like that. Mostly cloudy and milder with temperatures in the middle 40s as we head into tomorrow. I think we'll start our stretch of 60-degree weather. A lot of alliteration there. Variably cloudy with a chance of showers mainly to the north of Madison. And we'll take a look at that right now on future track. So temperatures dipping into the lower to middle 40s as we start off Saturday. Our latest forecast model runs have been bringing that precipitation a little bit farther south than previously thought. I still think the bulk of that rain is going to stay closer to Camp Douglas, Black River Falls, and Watoma, closer to central Wisconsin, but have the umbrella ready to go just in case we see a couple of raindrops tomorrow. Nothing more. As we head into Sunday, the chances of showers and thunderstorms get better across the area. You could see by the time we get into the mid-afternoon noon hours, we could be looking at some rain showers at that time. Now we also could be looking at some snow as we head into late Wednesday and Thursday across southern Wisconsin. Now how much the full details on this still well to be determined. We still have a lot of time to go and it's not unheard of that we get snow in April. Remember last year, I definitely remember the second snowiest April on record when we saw over a foot of snow in April. The most of 17 and a half inches was back in 1973. Normal is about two and a half. So definitely not unheard of and nothing to freak out about just yet. If you're talking with your friends on maybe social media about snow amounts just yet, you're not doing this process right. We need to let the forecast models marinate a little bit but we'll definitely keep you posted on any forecast changes as we head into next week. Temperatures are definitely looking chillier with highs closer to 40 degrees by Thursday. The Cubs are limping into Miller Park while the Brewers are sailing. The look ahead to the big weekend series in sports.
It's only the second week of the baseball season, but it kind of feels like a pretty big series beginning at Miller Park tonight as the 1-5 Chicago Cubs visit the 6-1 Milwaukee Brewers. First pitch at 7-10, Jose Quintana and Brandon Woodruff, the scheduled starters. The Cubs have been pretty miserable to start the season. Bad fielding and bad pitching is usually a pretty bad combination. But the Brewers have been doing a lot of things right, and they hope that continues this weekend against their rivals from the South. A really good lineup, so uh, this isn't going to be just a walkthrough series. I mean, we don't expect to come in here and just beat them all, all around the park, but uh, they'll, they'll come in with some pride. Uh, they haven't started off well, and uh, they're going to want to get going on the right foot before they go home. It's Final Four weekend in Minneapolis. Today, the four teams had public practices on the floor at U.S. Bank Stadium. The games begin tomorrow. It's Auburn and Virginia just after 5, then Michigan State and Texas Tech just before 8 tomorrow night. The semifinals and finals are live right here on News 3 Now. The women's Final Four begins in Tampa. Right now, the number one overall seed, Baylor, is playing Oregon. The second semifinal has Connecticut against Notre Dame. The championship game there is Sunday night. Another spring practice for Badger football tomorrow. The Badgers lost 262 tackles when seniors T.J. Edwards, Ryan Connolly, and Andrew Van Ginkel moved on. They'll try to replace those players with a pretty young defensive roster. Veteran linebacker Chris Orth is back, though. He's the old guy in the defensive meeting room. He shed a few pounds over the last year. He went from 232 to 217. He says it's made him a better football player. Orr says he's cutting back on dairy and red meat, but he's not doing anything crazy. He's still going to cheat on his diet every once in a while. After like a, a Saturday scrimmage, I would give me like a big burger or something like that. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, like it's not that strict. I'm not a physique model or something like that. I feel uh, way faster. Um, not as tired anymore. You know, my body doesn't really get beat up too much anymore. I can recover faster. It's not just leading the defense. I think he's doing a good job being a team leader, and and so I think Chris has to be himself because those are those things are natural, but. Um, you know, he can kind of set the tone. Another former Packer is joining the bunch of former Packers with the Cleveland Browns. Safety Morgan Burnett played in Pittsburgh last year, but agrees to terms with the Browns. Burnett played for the Packers for eight seasons. He started 102 uh, games in Green Bay. For a guy who doesn't have a job, Mike McCarthy's been on the news quite a bit the last couple of days. On Wednesday, McCarthy said his firing from the Packers couldn't have been handled worse. Yesterday, an article quoted a source that said McCarthy missed an offensive team meeting because he was getting a massage in his office. Well, today McCarthy responds. He says that I skipped a team meeting for a massage is utterly absurd. McCarthy added he did have his massage scheduled for today, but he didn't miss his primary responsibility of picking up his two children from school. Former Packer James Jones says all that's been reported, I don't remember any of this stuff going on. He said, he said, he said, he said. This is about as much drama as you'll ever find coming out of uh, as, Green as Bay. As long as it's about the Packers, everybody seems to be yeah, interested. People so. will, will listen to it. All right, final check of the forecast with Dave. Hopefully I don't massage the truth here too much. Uh, we're talking about temperatures in the upper 50s right now in Madison, closer to 60 in Lone Rock and Boscobel. So tonight we'll fall into the lower to middle 40s, mostly cloudy and milder outside. The 7 to 10 day forecast showing an extended stretch of 60 degree weather Saturday, Sunday and Monday. We do have to contend with a couple of showers, maybe some thunderstorms, especially on Sunday. And then next week we're watching very closely for some chillier weather. All right. Thanks, Dave. We'll be back tonight for News 3 Now at 10. Enjoy your Friday evening.